My wife was a good wife. She was a good mom. She was an entrepreneur. She came from nothing to something. Yuri, did you kill your wife? No, I didn't. You said you were innocent. I am innocent. Well, then what happened? God will vindicate me. Okay. Makiva Jenkins had worked hard her whole life, and just as it seemed that Makiva's hard work had finally led her to the life she'd always imagined, in the quiet hours of June 29, 2017, the pregnant mom of three from Florida was gunned down in her own home by a masked assailant as she slept. But what was initially masked as a violent home invasion unfolded into one of the most chilling murder-for-hire plots. At the center of it was Yuri Jenkins, a man who hid behind the facade of a loving husband to orchestrate a plot that would end with the tragic death of Makiva, a wife he claimed to love who was pregnant with his child. He was there to take one thing only, and that was to snatch the life of Makiva Jenkins. He was there to complete the job that the defendant asked him to do. Raised by her grandmother, Makiva Jenkins was special from day one, according to her family. She was very popular as a child, and by the time she became a teenager, everyone knew her. She got so popular that she was elected homecoming teen. Makiva loved people. She was a huge people person and never found it hard to connect to people. She was always surrounded by friends and family, but right from when she was little, she always had a strong sense of ambition. She she knew she wanted to make something of herself and worked hard to get there. According to her aunt, Makova was a hard worker and a model student who always got good grades. Makova's family didn't play when it came to education, so good grades were always mandatory in their house and Makova never disappointed. After high school, Makova headed off to the University of South Florida, but halfway through her college education, she got an unexpected surprise. She found out she was pregnant. And what's worse, the person who got her pregnant wasn't interested in being a parent, so Makeva became a single mom. But even as a single mom to her daughter, Senia, Makeva was determined to get her education. She found a way to balance motherhood and being a college student. And with the help of her family, Makeva not only graduated, but eventually went on to get her master's degree. She was the very definition of you can do anything if you put your mind to it. According to her brother, motherhood came quite easy for Makeva, and she was a fantastic mother to her daughter, Senia. Her and her daughter were more like best buddies than they were mother and daughter. Right after her college education, Makeva became an entrepreneur and started to open small businesses of her own. Some of them she was successful at, and some of them she failed at. But she never gave up, and with every business she started, she learned a little more about what it took to run a successful business. People that know my story, they'll say, well, Makeva, you used to have a nonprofit, you used to have an event planning company, you owned a boutique. But although Makeva was thriving in her career, she wasn't satisfied. She longed to meet the love of her life, get married, and start a family. That dream inched closer to reality on New Year's Eve of 2009, when she met 23-year-old barber Yuri Jenkins at a church celebration. According to her friends, Makeva was very smitten with Yuri when she met him and had the biggest smile on her face when she was talking about it. Makiva was quickly charmed by the handsome pastor's son and their relationship moved very fast. Her family didn't like it. They told her to take things slow with Yuri as she just met him and didn't know much about him yet, but Makiva knew Yuri was her forever and taking it slow was the last thing on her mind. She could already see the family they would have and the children they would raise together. Within a few months after they met, Makiva announced that she was pregnant. Her family was happy for her. She had always wanted a family, so they put aside their concerns concerns against Yuri and celebrated her joyful news. After welcoming a son, Makeva and Yuri tied the knot in a church ceremony, surrounded by family and friends. Her brother, who walked her down the aisle, recalled she was very happy. In fact, according to him, that was the happiest I ever seen her. But a few years into the marriage, Makeva and Yuri's relationship hit a rough patch when Makeva discovered that Yuri had gotten another woman pregnant. It broke her heart, and she felt she had no choice but to kick him out of the house. House. But despite the betrayal, Makeva still loved Yuri and eventually agreed to take him back. He even helped her develop her new business idea, a company that helped people create business plans called the Prime Enterprise Group. So um, when I started, I've always written business plans for like my family and friends, but I didn't do it as a company. I was still trying to figure out what my niche was and what I wanted to do. And it was my husband that suggested I start a consulting company. 
Although Makiva was resistant to the idea of starting a new company at that time, Yuri convinced her to, and it paid off. And I'm like, we don't have any money for that. I'm trying to um, get the boutique off the ground. I was still doing event planning here and there. And um, I still had my nonprofit. Again, I'm pulled in so many different areas because I'm just trying to make ends meet to help my husband pay the bills because as well it's not like it used to be in the in the past where men are the sole providers women get out there and hustle they do the work and they kind of meet each other in the middle the business became a massive success and after years of struggling financially makeva and her family began to enjoy a more comfortable life around the same time they also welcomed another child a daughter for makeva it couldn't get better than that life was good her businesses were thriving her family was good and her husband loved her according to her friend she had a glow about her and she would always say it was like all her blessings were coming together on june 23rd 2017 makeva reflected on her good fortune herself in a post on facebook i've been with my husband for seven years and every time i look at him it feels like new year's eve 2009 when i saw him in church i thought he was the most handsome guy i ever met i didn't say anything to him until 2010 and we've been making history ever since I love me some Mr. Jenkins, she wrote. Just six days later, on June 29, 2017, Makeva would be fired at in her sleep. Makeva Jenkins was an entrepreneur and a mother of three. She was gunned down inside her home in late June by a masked man. On June 29, 2017, in Palm Beach County, Florida, a masked attacker forced his way into the Jenkins family home in the early hours of the morning. Armed with a revolver, the assailant quickly carried out his mission, which on Unfortunately, was taking the life of 33-year-old Makiva Jenkins before fleeing from the scene. Makiva's brother, Key Greer, who was in the house at the house called 911. First responders got there and tried to stabilize Makiva before rushing her to the hospital. But unfortunately, she passed away minutes after she got to the hospital. The investigators began their investigation by questioning the three men who were at the house the night of the tragic incident. Makiva's husband, Yuri Jenkins, her brother, Quay Greer, and her husband's friends, Dimitri Dale. Quay Greer told the investigators investigators that he, Yuri, and Dimitri were all hanging out in the garage that was converted to a makeshift barber shop when the masked assailant barged in. Armed with a revolver, the assailant forced all three of them into the homes upstairs where Makiva and her children were sleeping. Yuri told investigators that he asked the assailant if Dimitri could take his children downstairs, and for some reason, the assailant agreed. This struck the investigators as a bit odd. Why would the assailant allow Dimitri to take the kids downstairs, where he could have access access to a phone and call the authorities, or where he could even escape. I thought, well that's kind of odd for a gunman to leave two people upstairs, but let one person go downstairs with a kid and possibly escape. Both Yuri and Quay told investigators the assailant then forced them to lay face down on the ground, but according to Yuri, Quay was not having it, and he wanted to jump the assailant. After all, there was only him, and there were two of them. But Yuri told investigators he was afraid, and wouldn't back him up, so Quay gave up on the idea. While the two two men laid on the floor, the assailant went into the dark bedroom where Makiva was sleeping and fired into her head before fleeing the scene in Dimitri's charger. Quay and Yuri rushed in moments later to find Makiva struggling to breathe. According to Quay, Yuri was immediately distraught. Yuri, he's crying, holding her head, telling Makiva, I can't do this without you, don't leave me, and you know he's telling her to breathe. Officers arrived and rushed Makiva to the hospital, where she died of her injuries. Once investigators had testimonies from the three men that were in the house that night, they began to look at suspects, and at first, investigators believed that the assailant may have been looking for Makiva's mom, Quest. After all, three men reported the suspect had been asking, where's Quest? So their working theory initially was that Makiva's mother, known as Quest, may have been the intended target. But after piecing together the clues that emerged in the days following the shocking incident, they discovered a chilling plot much closer to home. As the investigators worked on figuring out why the assailant asked for Makiva's mom, Quest by name, Makiva Makiva's family had their own theory, and according to them, Makiva might have been targeted by someone who saw her Facebook posts. Once, Makiva started doing well. She shared her story with her online followers. Her aim was to inspire other people to not give up on their journeys, because if she could make it, then anyone else could. But to her family, those encouraging posts might have made her a target. Like this one post she made a few days before she was attacked, where she talked about her journey so far. I'm in awe of how far I've come. This lady reached out to me about my business plan. We've been Facebook friends.
friends for years, but the last time we spoke through private message was 8-2011. In this message, I was inquiring about Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University, offered through her church. I couldn't even afford $99 at that time. Fast forward to now, we overcame being homeless in 2013-2014 to reaching my six-figure mark in 2015 to now making multi-six figures. No matter what the road looked like, I followed my heart and stuck with it growing my business. I'm saying this to say, anyone can do it. It takes determination and consistency. She also sometimes shared the rates she charged for her services, something her family argued could have put eyes on her, like in this post where she mentioned her rates. When people hire me to write their business plans, they range from $1,500 or $1,800. I'm teaching a five-day class to help people write their own for $399, or they can select specific topic days for $80 each day needed. Saying this to say, if you're interested and know you need a business plan, take advantage of this deal before the class fills up. If you keep making excuses, you're never going to get ahead. And then there was this post. Don't get upset when you jump in my inbox asking business questions, and I share the link to book a session with me. I'm not sorry. I'm not free. If I do free, I'm robbing my kids of opportunities. Stable housing, food, clothing, private school, extracurricular activities, lifestyle experiences, and more. I won't rob them of that. I have a family to care for. I don't give away my genius. I worked for it. If you're starting a business or have one, you're trying to grow, you're trying to make money too, right? Right! You want to pick my brain, you have a quick question, you want me to help you grow your business, book with me below. I can help you, help you, but it's not free. Makeva shared all these posts to advertise her services as well as encourage people, but to her family, they just made her visible. Makeva's husband, Yuri, however, did not agree. He did an interview after Makeva lost her life where he talked about his life with her. She was a good mother. She kept me level. How, how do you want people to be remembered, to remember Makila? She was an entrepreneur. She was that. According to him, he and Makava clicked instantly and they were like yin and yang. I, I'm an entrepreneur and we just clicked together. We used to call ourselves Jay-Z and Beyonce, a power couple. When he was asked what he thought of Makava's family's theory about her passing, he said he didn't agree. According to him, Makava was not bragging in her posts. She was just sharing her incredible journey with people. Honestly, 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 everybody can go to hell. My wife was a good wife. She was a good mom. She was an entrepreneur. She came from nothing. The investigators, however, were still focused on trying to figure out what Makeva's mom had to do with the attack. Why was her name mentioned? K. Greer admitted to investigators that he knew his mom had recently purchased some narcotics with fake money and thought the attack may have been in retaliation for her actions. He also believed the assailant might have mistaken the sleeping Makeva for Quest, who hadn't been at the house that night. But investigators could never figure out why an angry narcotics dealer would have gone to Makeva's home rather than track Quest down at her own Bell Glade apartment, close to 45 minutes away. So they invited Makiva's mom, Quest, to the station. There, she denied passing any fake money to narcotics dealers and said there had been no one after her at the time of her daughter's death. Authorities began to suspect that Quest may have never been the target at all, and that the gunman had come for Makeva all along, especially after they discovered that no valuables had been taken from the home. Investigators found it hard to believe that a narcotics dealer would come into a home where he believed someone who he made a bad deal with lived and wouldn't even speak to the person. It just didn't make a lot of sense. For some reason, the shooter just runs into the bedroom, fires one round, runs out. It didn't make sense. So they decided to appeal to the public for help. At this point, all they had to work with was the car the assailant escaped in. They had found the car where he dumped it, and it was a public place, so they thought someone might have seen something. We do have um, something specific that we're asking the public if they saw something at a particular time, and that that is because the suspect, after murdering Makiva, left the scene in a white Dodge Charger. The investigators felt someone could have picked him up from where he dumped the car, or he could have walked away on foot, increasing his chances of getting spotted by anyone around. He abandoned the Charger on Lawrence Road, just south of Pensacola, which is about a 0.9 miles from the scene. Um, we believe that either that person left on foot, had a car waiting for them, and we are just asking that anyone in that area between the hours of 150 in the morning and 220 in the morning on June 29th, which is a Thursday, if they saw a car on the shoulder of the road, if they saw anyone walking, 
Please call the sheriff's office. After appealing for help from the public, investigators also did a thorough search of the car, and they found something. They discovered a Miami sub receipt inside the vehicle, and luckily, it was dated the same day McKeva was unalived. The next thing they did was to look for that particular restaurant, and after they found it, they took a look at their surveillance camera. What they found was shocking. While they didn't know who they were looking for, they did see someone familiar. Demetri Dale, one of the men who were at McKeva's house on that tragic day. But he wasn't alone. He was with a man later identified as Joven Joseph. They quickly invited Dimitri back to the station for more questioning. He told investigators he and Joven had been out to Yuri's home earlier that day, but insisted when he returned to the home that night, he had been alone. He refused to tell the investigators any more than that, so they decided to check for surveillance cameras around the Jenkins home on that day. It didn't take long for them to find something. One particular surveillance footage showed a vehicle matching Joven's father following closely behind Dimitri's white Dodge Charger that night. At this point, investigators knew for sure Makiva had been the intended target that night, and the assailant only threw Quest's name in to mislead investigators. But the worst was yet to come. As they investigated further, they would find that the sinister plot ran deeper than they initially thought. A few days after Makiva was unalived, her husband Yuri made a call. That call would break the case wide open. As the investigators continued with their investigation, they found out that Makeva, who had been pregnant at the time of her death, had a 500000 iron life insurance policy. But that wasn't all they found. They also discovered that her husband, Yuri, assuming he was his wife's beneficiary, called the insurance company to start the process of collecting the money. Because it's coming up, and I can't, I don't, we don't have the, the funds to pay for her funeral and her funeral. Okay, so who has passed away then? Who passed away? The people. Okay. Okay. okay, and I am sorry for your loss, right? Let me get you over to our life benefits area, and I'll be able to help you. But when he spoke to the person in charge, he found out shocking information. Is it here? Yuri Jenkins or the Nine King or the Zoe, Zoe Jenkins? No, well, unfortunately I can't disclose that. That's considered confidential. Makiva's insurance agent refused to give him any information regarding the life insurance which told Yuri all he needed to know. He was not the beneficiary of her insurance policy. When investigators got their hands on the recording of Yuri's call, it told them all they needed to know. The insurance policy made Yuri a suspect because it gave him a possible motive, which was something the investigators hadn't found until that moment. While they had a good idea that Dimitri Dale and Joven Joseph had planned to take Makiva's life, they didn't have a motive. Neither of them knew her very well, and then there was the matter of nothing being taken from the house. They gained nothing by unaliving Makiva, except someone hired them to do it that someone, investigators theorized, could be Yuri Jenkins. They did a deep dive on Yuri, and they found more things that gave him motive. First, Yuri owed the woman he had gotten pregnant earlier in his and Makeva's marriage nearly $20,000 in unpaid child support payments. Investigators also found out that he had tried to get the same woman to be intimate with him just a day after his wife's death. But the discovery that nailed Yuri was that Makeva wanted a divorce. Investigators found out Makeva had asked Yuri for a divorce before she passed, but she had changed her mind when she found out she was pregnant. Armed with the new information, they put pressure on Dale, who ultimately admitted that Joven had been the assailant investigators had been looking for, but that he had done it because Yuri hired him to do it. Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office says this 19-year-old is responsible for her death. Dimitri Dale also agreed to record a damaging conversation between himself and Yuri, which helped bring the investigator's case against Yuri Jenkin together. Once they had that, Dimitri Dale, Joven Joseph, and Yuri Jenkins were placed under arrest. While the other two cooperated with investigators and told the truth, Yuri Jenkins claimed he was innocent. Yuri, did you kill your wife? No, I didn't. You said you were innocent. I am innocent. Well, then what happened? God will vindicate me. What do you have to say about this, Yuri? This is some bull****. 
God will vindicate me. You say you're innocent? I'm innocent. Yes, I am. All three of them were charged. Some months later, Yuri's trial began. Dimitri agreed to testify against him in exchange for a lighter sentence. Joven pleaded guilty to first-degree murder and also agreed to testify against Yuri in exchange for a lighter sentence, a decision Yuri's defense attorney disagreed with. Come on, Joseph just got probably one of the sweetest deals I've seen in a homicide case in the 34 years that I'm a criminal defense attorney. Theoretically, the judge can give him as little as five years in the Department of Corrections, and the most he can get is 20 years in the Department of Corrections. The state waived any mandatory minimum sentence. He argued that Joven should have not gotten a deal, given that he was the one who pulled the trigger. I mean, Jovan Joseph is accused of this young woman in the head at point-blank range and killing her. And he's going to serve at worst 17 and a half years in prison. Joven told investigators that Yuri had paid him $1,500 up front and promised him an additional $10,000 after he had done what Yuri asked him to do. In spring 2022, five years after Makeva's life was tragically ended, her husband, Yuri's trial, began. When Yuri's trial started, his attorney argued that neither Dimitri nor Jovan's testimonies could be believed because they had changed a few times. You're going to hear that Dimitri Dale gave a statement on June 30th of 2017. You're going to hear that he gave another statement on August 14th of 2017. You're going to hear that he gave another statement in October of 2014. He was doing all kinds of, giving all kinds of statements, making all kinds of statements that were consistently inconsistent with each other. Yuri's attorney tried to convince the jury that Dimitri and Jovan were lying about Yuri being the mastermind behind the whole thing. They have to testify in a way that convinces the prosecution that they are being true, despite the fact that they are both admitted liars despite the fact that they have a history of not telling the truth, despite the fact that neither of them can agree on what allegedly happened, or at least the story that they're supposed to be telling about what happened. And during cross-examination, he tried to catch Joven in a lie when he asked him about the money both he and Dimitri were paid for their role in the murder. And on that day, you said this is right before you were leaving, is when you got paid the money, correct? Yes, sir. And you were sitting in the car as we testified? Yes, sir. And Mr. Jenkins handed you $10,000 in cash? Yes, sir. And isn't it true you, he also handed $10,000 in cash to Mr. Dale? That's what I assume, yes. Well, he handed a, a pile of cash to Mr. Dale? Yes, sir. You didn't count Mr. Dale's cash, right? Yes, sir. But you assumed it was the same amount as yours? Yes, sir. Because they're, they're about the same height? But Joven said he couldn't tell for sure how much Dimitri had been paid because he didn't count it. Well, I don't know, sir. You didn't look at the money he got? No, sir. But you looked at the money you got, right? Yes, sir. And you testified they were all hundreds, right? I don't remember, sir. You don't remember that they were all hundred dollar bills? You asked me, you, uh, you said that I testified it was all hundred dollars. No, I'm asking you right now, were they all one hundred dollar bills? I don't remember, sir. You don't remember? Joven and Demetre's statements were very inconsistent throughout the trial, but there was one thing they both agreed on. Yuri had made the plans and was the one who described where Makeva would be to Jovan. Can I ask you these questions, Mr. Dale? Did this defendant, your Jenkins, did he give you, Javon Joseph, access to his house on June 29th, 2017 in the early morning hours? He did. Did this defendant tell you that he wanted his wife killed? He did. Did this defendant have a discussion with you and Javon Joseph about killing his wife? Objection leading. Oh, he did. Dimitri testified that Yuri had told him to lead Jovan to their house on that day. Did this defendant ask you to bring Jovan Joseph back to his house during the early morning hours of June 29, 2017? You did. Makeva's brother, Quay, also testified about the strange things he noticed on that day. Tell us not to move. Get down on the ground and don't move. Okay. Now, are you able to have any type of conversation with the defendant while you both are lying down on the ground? Yes. He testified that he thought the assailant, who turned out to be Jovan, looked familiar because he had seen him with Yuri earlier that day. What What are you both, or who's saying what to whom? He, he, I, I'm, 
I as I told him that, hey, isn't that your friend from earlier that day that came? He told me no. And you said you're thinking, you asked him, <coughs> is that your friend or the guy who came over earlier? Yes. Now, who, which friend are you referring to? Are you talking about the guy that came over with Demetri Dale or someone else? The one that came over with Demetri Dale. And the defendant told you that that was not him? Yes. Quay also testified to wanting to jump the assailant, but Yuri said he was too scared to do anything. And then they went on to say that, I went on to say that, hey, we need to do something about this, yo. We can't just let this man come in here and do whatever he want to do. You know, we live here, the kids here, we got to do something. We can't just sit here. You both are down on the ground. You're somewhat whispering to each other, and he, the gunman is making his way over to that hallway to the left where your sister is asleep in her room? Yes. As they were arguing, Quay testified that's when he heard a firearm go off. I heard the gun go off. How many times did you hear the gun go off? One time. And after the gun went off, what did the gunman do? He sprinted out. He ran out the room as if he was you know, in a track meet. During the closing arguments, Yuri's attorney told the jury the entire case had been filled with lies. This case is about lies and liars. Plain and simple. It is the burden of the government to provide you with truthful, honest, sworn testimony. The prosecutor, on the other hand, talked about the insurance policy and how disappointed Yuri was to find out that Makeva made her mother the beneficiary and not him. 28 days before her death, uh, that the one policy was changed and he assumed, he assumed that the second policy had been changed also. He was there to take one thing only, and that was to snatch the life of Makeva Jenkins. He was there to complete the job that the defendant asked him to do. The jury then gave their verdict, finding Yuri guilty. We, the jury, find, find as follows. As to count one, we find the defendant guilty of first degree murder as charged in the indictment. Hey, thanks for watching. Our heart goes out to the family and friends of Makeva Jenkins. What are your thoughts on this case? Do you know of other similar cases? Let me know in a comment. And before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. See you next time, and stay safe.